We're all looking to make more sustainable choices, but making your own shoes out of natural materials could pose a few challenges. The twigs and leaves in your backyard aren't exactly comfortable, and while mud does perfectly contour the feet, it doesn't score high on the durability front. But thanks to Allbirds, you can skip all the backyard experimentation. At the Allbirds Innovation Lab, they're doing all the sciencey stuff, like research and testing to create shoes from natural, sustainable materials. And their innovative processes mean using less of the bad stuff and more of the good, while making shoes unlike any other. Like the Plant Pacer, made with 100% plastic-free plant leather. The Tree Dasher, a running shoe made from eucalyptus tree fiber. And from Sugarcane, they've made the Super Light, their lightest shoe ever by weight and carbon footprint. It's not rocket science, it's shoe science. Allbirds is making shoes better than natural. They're super natural. Find your perfect pair at allbirds.com today. That's A-L-L-B-I-R-D-S dot com. It's the Dare to Ask podcast. Season three, episode five, all eyes on you. Definitely protect yeah. your eyes. I can't do it for you. I'm Corey Jensen, your host for this Dare to Ask podcast. I'm a mom to a big family and have delivered five babies. And like many women, I try to stay informed about my wellness as well as the health of my kids. We've created a space to have open conversation about what's going on with the woman's body without feeling intimidated in a clinical setting. A place to talk like girlfriends do. A space that dares to ask. We're here to make a connection, be authentic, and really get to know your provider. Yes, know the person behind the stethoscope. Dare to Ask will be where you hear the questions that we are all curious to know, but just need a space to do it. You've landed on the Dare to Ask podcast, show hosted by Corey Jensen and sponsored by Essentia Health. If we say that your life is going to be a little bit more beneficial with bifocals, it's probably time to just accept oh. you need bifocals. <laughs> I get the opportunity to sit down with Dr. Jessica Monroe, and she sees clearly, no, literally, she has no need for corrective lenses and never has. This reality, though, about her eye health and vision is all part of what propelled her into her practice in optometry. Jessica also comes with some very practical things that we can do right now to improve our vision as well as what to avoid. And knowing the no-nos is just as important as knowing what you should be doing. And so we made a no-no list and we kick it off with a warning of what you should never, ever be using when it comes to your eyes. A true hard stop to help your eye health and vision. I'll also get her hot take on eye makeup and false lashes. She spills on makeup that's not great for you, but even admits herself that she wears it. But it comes with a doctor's warning on how to wear it safely. We cover a lot of makeup stuff and how it really affects our eyes. In fact, she's got one of the most amazing makeup removers. It's a hack you're going to love. So let's get to it. Coffee or tea? Coffee, for sure. Black. That's what I'm having right now. That's what you're yes. drinking right now. Red or white? Red. Red. I'm dabbling in the white a little more. Okay. Though. Do you like beer? Yes. IPA or light? I Domestic like IPAs. Beer the different flavors I, I like them a lot of people don't what's your go to drink what's your favorite though gin martini wow I was unprepared for a gin martini yep gin martini nice I got that probably from my dad and my grandpa though I like that I grew up drinking gin soaked olives which is probably not ideal and so <laughs> I I kind of gathered an acquired okay. taste for gin yeah I would have to blame my dad for Jack Daniels then little Jack and diet that right makes there. sense I like that <laughs> What's your favorite holiday? Christmas, for sure. Why? I just like it's like a whole month of cheer. I like living where there's snow. I would say the 4th of July is a pretty darn good holiday, though. Too. Anything where people are meant to be in a good mood and want to spread cheer, mm -hmm. which is totally, you nailed it, Christmas yep. and 4th of July. What would you like me to call you? Jess, Jessica, Dr. Monroe. Definitely Jess or Jessica. Okay. Yep, that's okay. the most common. Let's find out a little bit about your day-to-day. -day. And how long have you been an optometrist? I graduated in 2020 from optometry school, so we didn't really have a graduation yeah, due to yeah. COVID. Nobody of 2020, any sort of class, had a graduation, yeah. really. And so I went to um, optometry school in Chicago, took boards. I applied for this job at Essentia while I was still in school. Okay. And um, they 
had an opening and I thought that that's a great place to work. And yeah. so I'm from North Dakota. I came back and I am, so I've been at Essentia, yeah, since August 2020. Okay. Yeah. Tell me about your background. I am from a small, small town, sort of on the northern border by the Peace Gardens, if you know where that's at. I've never been, but I know. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Very small town, Rala. Pemina would be a lot more on the eastern side. Okay. Okay. Yep. yep. Small little town. Does that mean you spend a lot of time in Canada doing Canadian you things? You know, a lot of people ask that. And no, I didn't go up there to drink early. We went up there to ski a couple times. There were a few restaurants across the border. Honestly, we didn't really go up there that much, which is, I don't know, kind of strange to me, too. But we kind of have all we need right here. So oh, yes. yeah. There's <laughs> a lot there's going on here. Family for sure. or mm-hmm. something that's taking you to a specific place. I've actually never been to Canada either. I'm good. Meh. It's still just rural across the border. So what led you into the eyes? I am not someone that said, oh, I've always wanted to be a doctor. No way. I don't think I knew what I wanted to do. I went to UND for undergrad, and I think a lot of my friends were kind of in pre-med, and I liked the sciences. I kind of liked the challenge of it, Mm -hmm. but I equally liked the thought of being just an accountant or something, too. So I probably could have been talked into anything, but after going to a lot more classes, I liked medicine, and I am definitely the type of person that would need like a very routine same thing every day. Mm -hmm. I don't see the same thing every day, but I'm like prepared for one specific thing. So I shadowed a few optometrists and I thought, I like that. I really like the eyes. And the other thing is I don't have bad vision. So a lot of people would say, what brought you into that? You have perfect vision. That's kind of why I'm like, how does the world not see the way that I do? So I got very intrigued by that. Sometimes what leads you here is, oh, you know, maybe somebody close in your family had some sort of degenerative eye disease or right, blindness right. or something that right. would have like inspired, inspired me. You. Exactly. It was kind of the opposite. I was inspired by the fact that I could give other people good vision in most cases. Most eye doctors don't have to worry about being on call and having a beeper go off at 2 a.m. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, the idea of a very family orientated job was super important to me. Because family is important to you? Absolutely. I do not have kids yet. I'm the oldest of five. And, you know, in a small town, you're a little bit more involved in things potentially because you won't have anything else to do, (laughs) kind of. So my family was always just super involved in everything. And we just made time to do a lot of things. And there is great jobs out there, but they don't always cater to the other part of your life, which is not working. Right. Yeah. So um, you say it's in the works. Does that mean uh, do you have a partner, spouse? Yes, I got married um, this last September. His name is Cole. Yep. We've known each other way back since high school. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, we got married in September. I can't wait, though. I mean, growing up with a lot of siblings, I don't know if time is always on my side, but I'm going to mm-hmm. try for quite a few. Yeah. Quite a few kids. I'm a big fan of big families. I you have, have five, family. right? I love big families. And I only have one sibling, but I grew up around just a ton of cousins, mm-hmm. aunts mm-hmm. and uncles, mm-hmm. both sets of grandparents. Right. So that small town, family oriented everybody was everywhere with each other because really there wasn't a whole lot to do. I know exactly what you're talking yep. about. Yep. <laughs> Let's talk about the future of eyes because yes. in optometry, I feel like this is certainly an area that continues to evolve. There's mm-hmm. growth, like the science just keeps getting better, new instruments, things that are making it possible for people to have the best vision they've ever had. Mm-hmm. Yes. What excites yes. you about the future? Well, definitely the technology, um, like you're talking about, and just general questions being asked, like, hey, can we fix this? Hey, can Mm -hmm. we do something about this? I would actually differ on a few things that you said, though, because as much as technology is coming, we're also kind of self-inducing a lot of problems. Yes, absolutely. I don't think screens are really going anywhere, Mm. but the plethora of near related work that isn't going anywhere either yeah and so we're actually kind of inducing a few vision concerns starting at a much earlier age than expected maybe 20 years ago but the technology is evolving too Mm -hmm. and so we're not getting rid of screens we're not getting rid of the way that we educate and the ease of education so we kind of just have to adapt what would you like to see do people need to start taking more seriously like blue light glasses blue light glasses I think are great I think anytime you can reduce any sort of reflection of anything, your eyes are going to thank you for that for sure. I think what's kind of need to be taken seriously is the whole idea of attention span is kind of 20 minutes. 
the eyes are kind of the same. That muscle has about 20 minutes of stamina and then it needs to move on to something far away. If it can fix two things, it can fix, you know, a lot of not even kids. I mean, adult attention span at 20 minutes. One of my biggest recommendations to probably college age students, those in college would be set a timer for 20 minutes. You'll actually get more work done. You'll be much more productive because you only have 20 minutes. Yeah. The minute it goes off, you have to go do something totally different for about two minutes, I would say. Doesn't have to be long. Go to the bathroom, um, fold the laundry, like do all that stuff you have to do anyway. Something I talk about a lot because I do see a lot of kids mostly at Essentia. Here's like a a very small change that we can all do. Every single one of us would benefit from it. Yes. yes. Moving our body. That seems to be a good thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) That keeps coming back around. Why that's so healthy. So healthy. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. So those are just little tricks that you can do every single day. But yeah, we kind of self-induce some of the the current um, problems. So we just have to combat that. Yeah. Biggest no-no's maybe a top five or even less of like some of the biggest no-nos that you see in your practice that people do that you would just love to scream from the hilltops and say, can you stop? I think I can speak for every optometrist (laughs) and ophthalmologist on this first one. There are specific lubricating eye drops Mm -hmm. that you should definitely avoid. They probably don't even say lubricating on them anymore. I'm not sure. But Visine, Clear Eyes, and basically any cheaper version of an eye lubricant. So many times people come in with either an allergic reaction or beet red eyes that just don't get better and they all have it in common. They're using Visine or they're using Clear Mm -hmm. Eyes. Is it on the market? Yes. Is it safe? Yes. Does it work? No. Mm -hmm. It's actually going to do quite the opposite of what it tells you it's going to do. And how that it's just this cyclical problem Mm -hmm. that keeps feeding into Mm -hmm. itself. Right. Exactly. Have you ever watched Austin Powers? Yes. (laughs) I eat because I'm unhappy and I'm unhappy because I eat. Like I use Visine because I think I have dry red eyes. And yet I just keep having dry red eyes Mm -hmm. because I use Visine. Mm -hmm. And there's always probably a decent reason for dry eye. Sometimes we can't find one, but a lot of times, especially women, it's hormonal all the time. So you got to kind of fix it more at its source than put an eye drop in and Mm -hmm. hope the problems Mm -hmm. will go away. That is probably the shout it across the rooftops one that everybody would say. We're going to put those down. Yes. Try to find the source instead of the red or the itchy eyes, what we think is our main issue. And cold turkey. Just stop. Yeah. Stop <laughs> stop those and go to a, a different brand. Okay. Lubrication and wetness are not the same thing. And I think mm-hmm. that's what the clear difference is yeah. between the two is one is going to offer just a wet drop and sure. that's not going to yeah. help lubricating. So you're speaking to the general consumer too. Oh, yeah. Paying yes. attention to the difference. Right. If Visine and Clear Eyes are on it, what else is a big no-no? I don't want to call this a big no-no, I guess. I want just another public service announcement okay. that, that if we say that your life is going to be a little bit more beneficial with bifocals, it's probably time to just accept oh. you need bifocals. <laughs> I see that that's hard for people. Um, mm. Honestly, because I see a lot of people who don't wear anything and all yeah. of a sudden I'm telling them to wear glasses kind of thing. But bifocals are there for a reason. That muscle gives up way before we're ready. So I would just say bite the bullet. And <laughs> when I say it's time, it's time. What's the easiest? Just have have a pair of readers everywhere? I just don't know that I can make that decision because one, I don't need them yet. Two, it's your work ergonomics that I think matter more to answer that question. Yeah. So if a bunch of dollar store cheaters is what works for you, yeah. I have no problem with that. Mm-hmm. If you'd rather just have them on your face so you don't have to take them on and off, again, no yeah. problem with that. So that one's more work ergonomic situation. Yeah. And I don't really want to be the one to tell you what to do in that one. Love Whatever it. works so, for you works what, for me. Yes. <laughs> Where are you with contacts and sleep? Feel like that makes a top five no-no list. Oh, yes. <laughs> you want to sleep in your contacts and get a red eye. I mean, you're coming to see me. It'll be the easiest fix of my day, but the easiest thing that you don't have to do either to right. avoid pretty, pretty terrible infections. Mm-hmm. So most of the time, the cornea is so painful. You sleep in them one time, you're going to notice. Do some steroids. It's gone. It doesn't get to the infection point. Some people have a huge pain tolerance and they'll just keep that contact uh-huh. in. And now we're talking about an Ulcer. So yeah. that's vision threatening for sure. Yesterday, I think there were four that I saw. It's easy for me to come in. Oh, that's what it is. Here's your medicine. Wow. Go home. But it's it would help a lot if we did not sleep in them. And it's usually very simply laziness. Some patients that say, oh, I just I just didn't feel like taking them out. And I'm just like, did you feel like brushing your teeth? Right. Did you feel like showering? Did you feel like 
I'm not here to judge, but a lot of times I'm like, oh, this could have been avoidable, but here we are. I'll yeah. fix it and let's not do it again kind of thing. Now, I had made the move from being longstanding contact wearer to getting corrective eye surgery. Mm-hmm. I admit that there were a handful of times that I slept in my contacts, but not in the last five, six years once I went to dailies because yes. it was just way too easy. Pluck those out. Way They're dead easy. anyway to me now. Mm-hmm. I'll mm-hmm. get you a new one tomorrow, babes. Let's just forget about you, which that for me was one of the things with my vision that made the hugest difference going to dailies mm-hmm. because just that wear and tear of the contact trying to clean, trying to, and then pop back in your eye. It felt clunky and fat and gross in my eyeball. Yeah. So take the darn things out. Super grossed out on TikTok with a bunch of videos making their rounds with multiple yes. contacts yes. jammed up in her eyelids. Yes. And How is that even possible? I mean, the suspicion would be that you can kind of lose corneal sensitivity. And if you've been a long time contact lens where you already have reduced corneal sensitivity, that makes so sense. one, she could have probably maybe had like seven on there without noticing. And then it probably got stuck under the upper lid because it got too yep. thick. Three is my Three. limit so far. Yep. Okay. That's what I've seen so far. And those were daily. So I think they just assumed they had take. Those are thin. So it's probably easier to do a couple than you think. At 20 some, I just wonder, you know, oh. are we looking in the mirror ever? Does it feel bad? But she probably had where you lose corneal sensitivity. Sure. So she may not have and felt it so as much. Eyelash in my eye or the tiniest speck of anything. Yes. It feels like a log. Yes. It feels like the most giant, uncomfortable thing ever. So, of course, wrapping my brain around 20 contact lenses shoved up in my eyelid. It's ugh. Eye protection and snow. Friends who say, really only wear my sunglasses in the summertime. For me, the UV is more painful even in the winter because everything is blinding me with the sun. I would say that I am one of those people that I could leave the house without my sunglasses and be fine. Yeah. My husband won't even like turn the lights on without thinking it's too bright. It does have to do with the color of your eyes for sure. If you have significantly less pigment, which I'm looking at yours and you yeah. have way less. So you're going to be more sensitive in general. The size of your pupils is a huge factor. Oh. If you have large pupils, you're going to be way more sensitive regardless of any time of the day, whatever um, kind of exposure it is. But you definitely nailed it in in places like Florida, you're either near water, on the water, you're always outside. It's typically always sunny as it's called the sunshine state. And they wear them all the time. And I agree. A lot of people just don't even consider the rays that snow bounces into your eyes. And so I would agree. You need to be wearing those all the time. Mm -hmm. UV light doesn't just directly come down from the sun. It does reflect off of things. Similar to if you were snow skiing, I I wouldn't think you'd be able to go down the mountain without any sort of... <laughs> you know, without any sort of protection. So, no, it's a huge thing. And I think a lot of people don't wear sunglasses that much, yeah. but they're probably of the variety that don't wear glasses in general. So it's kind of hard. But some of us that don't wear anything, even sunglasses can be annoying, but it's a big thing. Definitely protect yeah. your eyes. Well, they can't do it for you. Kind of like how we were just discussing cheaters. I mean... Mm-hmm. You can literally buy a pair of sunglasses for a dollar. Now, mm-hmm. granted, they might not be of the UV protectant standard mm-hmm. that, you know, you're going to spend a little bit more money. For sure. um, and you should. But I think at least something is better than that. Absolutely. I am so much better at wearing them than I used to be. Yeah. For sure. It's been, it's been hard for me to get my kids into wearing sunglasses. Yeah. and Because I feel yeah. like, again, you know, their eyes are, they're youthful. They're young. They're not feeling like they need them when when I'm I'm always pushing the sunglasses. Like, yes. Get some glasses on your eyeballs. That and honestly, wearing hats is really important just for yeah. your skin in general. And the, that will totally help protect your eyes, too. Okay. Yeah. This is good. OK, so I have always thought like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to avoid rubbing my eyes mainly because of wrinkles, because of skin. And I, I know that that can, you know, be very bad for your skin. The rubbing of the eye, as I've learned, kind of like the Visine thing, you're actually causing more issue. Like you're rubbing your eye because maybe you feel something in there, you want to itch, but it's actually potentially scratching up your eyeball more. Especially with kids. We don't like that because they can reform their cornea. Mm. And the cornea, I mean, that's where self-induced astigmatism. So if a kid is really rubbing their eyes a lot, we want to question how we can prevent them from doing that or if they are doing that to try to elicit better vision. It is an instinctual thing. The older we get, there's definitely an instance where I would recommend lid massages. I won't say rubbing your eyes. I'd recommend lid massages. So for instance, I wear mascara every day. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. If I'm in the shower, I have to scrub that off, right? I have to take it off. So I'm literally rubbing my eyelashes to clean them and to get rid of all that makeup. That's really good for those glands that are right oh, next yeah. to the eyelashes. Now, that's different from taking your knuckles and totally sure. rubbing into your eyes. There's there's no reason to do that. You probably have a different situation like allergies or something. But pretty standard for some of us to recommend that you do to really kind of massage those glands a little bit in the shower where there's some heat and stuff. Mm-hmm. So that would actually be one instance where I would say massage. Ahead, I won't say rub. I'll say massage. But full on knuckle rubbing, I just worry that there's a different reason. So yeah, definitely avoid that. Not ideal. I feel like um, especially since you brought up mascara, that le- that was leading me into one of the questions I had for you in regards to makeup, mm-hmm. in regards to false lashes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> especially these days. I think yes. false lashes are having their moment. Give me some direct on what the optometry world feels about makeup and lashes. Well, if you've ever seen fake eyelashes, glue on or otherwise, at 40 to 60 magnification, you are instantly grossed out. As clean as a person as you may think that you are, you're not really allowed to clean those. Just like I went back to kind of massaging those eyelids, you're not allowed to do that. They're, they're going to come out. There is a good spray out there. I'll just hyperchloric spray. You can find them anywhere, but that's mm-hmm. good for those of you that are still going to wear false lashes. Yeah especially the gluon type. But yeah, once you've seen them at that magnification, I mean, you would be shocked at what can grow on there. So I definitely recommend more regular mascara or even like these, the tints and the curls, Mm -hmm. like even that's a lot better. Um, But honestly, so many people are very, very sensitive to the glues and stuff that they use. Um, I mean, us women, we love our lashes, but you won't see me wearing them for, for those reasons. What I'll say about makeup is, you know, we basically have found out if it costs more, it's probably made with better products Mm -hmm. it's probably better for you okay so that's kind of how I'll leave that eyeshadow um gosh I've been wearing eyeshadow since 12 14 (laughs) maybe (laughs) um it's not good for you it's a bunch of glitter it's not great I still wear it every day a very light amount but definitely if you're sensitive to something Mm -hmm. don't keep using it it's obviously not the right product find something else but also wash it off every day wash it off every day and that's where it can be just as bacterial growth if you don't just wash your eyelids every day contacts or not so sometimes those can be correlated but sometimes not yeah if it costs more it's probably a better product okay I, I like those fast tips what about difference between waterproof versus not mascara not a huge factor okay. there one is obviously significantly harder to get off mm-hmm. when it comes to removing makeup if I could recommend one thing it would be baby shampoo doesn't sting yeah. kind of get it nice and sudsy and, and remove things a lot of oils that are designed to take your makeup off actually end up inducing severe dryness. You'll find that you need a lot more moisture around your eyes because the oil, although it's oil, kind of sucks your own glands from doing their job. Okay, so. that's a fast take that I really enjoy. Yeah, so not all makeup removers created equal. Okay. Sometimes that one is more like, let's just go to the baby section, grab some baby yeah. shampoo and, and try that. What's your number one injury that you probably see more than anything? Metal in the eye, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And how? A lot of mechanics. Honestly, a lot of it's the one time they didn't wear safety glasses. They're probably not even at work. They might do that for work, but they're maybe just working on a shop project at home. Sure. Yeah, happens all the time. A lot easier to take out than one would think. It sounds a little bit more scary than it is. But honestly, half of the people that come in, they've had it done before. They know that it's going to require some medication sure. and then maybe a band. Band-aid kind of thing, but um, metal in the eye is pretty, pretty common. At what point do you go see your doctor? You've tried flushing it out at home. What is that? Okay, now it's time I actually go and see a doctor. <laughs> Great question. So flushing it out at home, honestly, I think a lot of people think that they're doing that well, but I'm talking like four bottles of a lubricating drop and you're just wasting them into your eye. You really, yeah. really, really got to get it out. If it is any sort of basic solution, cleaning solution, the walk-in is always available. Definitely call any optometrist if it's a regular nine to five, Monday through yeah. Friday, top-notch equipment to be able to see that. So definitely don't be afraid to call any local optometrist. They will see you almost. Okay. I can't obviously speak for everybody, but they will see you versus waiting in the walk 
walk-in is kind of the problem or ER is that waiting period. We don't know what it's made out of. We want to get it out of there ASAP. And a lot of times your eye is going to react like there's something in there well after it's out. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's just a couple days later you're, you're dealing with the reaction and we can't find anything in there, but you might still need some drops. It all depends on, on what it is, how long you should wait. That is good info. I like to ask all of my guests, regardless of what their specialty is, about personal health nuggets. What is the one thing that you think is paramount to your own personal health? Sleep. Sleep. I can say that now because I don't have kids, but um, sleep is just, I mean, I, my body knows if I'm even remotely off a little bit. We don't fit enough into 24 hours. We just can't. Um, so we kind of put sleep on the back burner. We cannot do that. I mean, sleep is sleep is huge. And then, of course, like kind of what we were alluding to earlier, moving, eating right. It's hard, but sleep is definitely up there. So if and when kids do come, <laughs> ask me again. We'll see. We'll right, see if I put right. something easier on, on my list. No, I guarantee you, I guarantee since I am somebody who has many kids, you'll still always want sleep and find the importance of it, whether you're getting it or not mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and how much that'll be determined on your kids. But yes. it's still like it, it was always for my husband and I, one of the most important things to create a schedule for our kids and make sleep so important. It's the best for your health overall. Yes. yes, yes. Eyes included. Oh yeah, you need to rest them. We're on them all day, (laughs) using them all day. Speaking of eye health and you brought up diet, we had to have all grown up and say like, eat your carrots. Mm -hmm. Is that really important? Yep. So the way I usually describe it is obviously a healthy diet, but the eyes rely on three-ish main food groups. Okay. The darker the greens of any vegetable, the darker the greens. Kale, obviously, probably being the king. Spinach right there, too. But just the darker the greens. And then the darker the oranges. Squash, carrots, Mm -hmm. sweet potatoes. The eye kind of runs off of vitamins that we don't produce naturally. So you have to eat them. And then the other thing would be fats on the healthy fat side. All the fish in the world, salmon is high in that good omega-3. And then nuts and avocados. You know, if it's a very, very oily, waxy nut... You're going to get the best of the fat. And then avocado, of course, which is easy to eat in many forms. Mm-hmm. That's really good for you, too. So, again, the eye, the front, back, all parts of the eye <laughs> rely on vitamins that we don't naturally produce. So you yeah. do need to eat them. Yeah. Are you doing exactly what you want to be doing? Where are you in your optometry practice? <laughs> That's a good question. I think I'm pretty well-rounded, which is what I wanted. And I mm-hmm. don't know that you're going to get that necessarily working for private private practice per se, which is why I didn't go into private practice originally. At Essentia, you're going to see a lot more of everything. And I do like that. I mean, I would say my days are 50%. Oh my goodness, I have no idea what this is. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, got to bring out the books again. And then, you know, 50% is easy, you know, one, two, that's better. All right. See you mm-hmm. next year kind of thing. Yeah. And it breaks the day up really well. Um, but I don't know if, if other places you would be able to see as much disease. So we definitely better. see... Um, and by disease, I mean, I mean, most of my schedule is, is diabetic in nature, yeah. which is huge on the eyes. And I don't know if you'd get to see that at all mm-hmm. practices. So I'm very happy with what I do and what I see every day. Hey, yeah, I can see why you would be drawn to that. Mm-hmm. Just that constant um, real life education, getting better every day in mm-hmm. that regard. Mm-hmm. Anything you'd like to impart, especially for women? Yeah, for women, like I said before, I mean, not always putting yourself first kind mm-hmm. of thing. If you have vision concerns of any kind, it is almost always going to be some sort of hormonal change, but don't just chalk it up to I'm a woman and my eyes have some issues. Definitely come in. Um, Dry eye is a very serious thing, but we're also working on screen so much and and, um, there's a lot of reasons for you to be uncomfortable. So we don't just try to get you to 2020. We try to get you comfortable as, Mm -hmm. as well. I think any eye doctor in any capacity would probably say that the biggest and most important thing is definitely, definitely come in for yearly eye exams. Okay. The front of the eye is easy. You can feel it. We can see it. Yeah. The back of the eye is hard. You can't see it. Only we can see it. And there is no pain. Overall, I would say as long as you have regular, regular health checkups with us, um, you're going to either learn stuff about your eyes you didn't know or, or maybe find out that you're doing everything right. Awesome. You have given me all kinds of nuggets today. New for the podcast. We've never had and never talked eye health before. So this is exciting. It is exciting. Thank you for being our first, Jessica. (laughs) Thank you for having me. (laughs) 
Got some really fresh takes there from Dr. Jessica Monroe at Essential Health and Optometry. I am looking forward to the rest of the season. We are not even halfway there. So stay tuned for more. It is the Dare to Ask podcast. The information contained in this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for personalized professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. The information is general in nature. If you have questions or concerns, please contact your provider. $2.99 $2.99 a month for 2021 all-wheel drive Equinox under factory warranty. You heard that right. Prices starting at $23,999, payments starting at $2.99, and no payments for 90 days. Hey, Twin Ports, Matt here from Northland Chevrolet. Great news. We went and did it again. We got a special purchase alert here in Superior. Other dealers passed, so we hit the gas. We bought a truckload of 2021 Chevrolet Equinoxes, all-wheel drive, all under factory warranty. $2.99 a month is based on 10% down plus tax title and license fees at 84 months at 5% APR on approved credit. Stop in, click, or call today. The deals are great. The people are great at Northland Chevrolet.